everyone, this is Craig Durr with the Futurum Group. I'm the practice lead for our workplace collaboration practice. Um, and I have a great conversation that I'm excited to share with you today. I'm going to be talking to Brad Hinsey, who's the Executive Vice President of Marketing from Crestron. And we're going to talk to you about the topics that are really near and dear to both of us. We've talked about this in the past. And it's about multi-camera solutions in these high impact rooms and spaces. It's kind of a unique niche that Crestron has really established itself as a market leader here. And we want to really understand his thoughts and processes around this. Brad, welcome to this webcast. How are you doing? I'm great, Craig. It's always great to share a cup of coffee with you and have a nice conversation. This is going to be a great one. What I love about this conversation here, Brad, is we're going to really key in on something that Crestron is really well known for, and that is high impact spaces. These are those rooms that have a lot of value. They may not be numerous in a, in a deployment, but they have a lot of impact on what they're doing to uh, communication and collaboration. In particular, we want to talk about some of the multi-camera options that are available in that space. Sound good? Absolutely. Sounds great. All right. Well, let's dig in here. Hey, so but instead of me talking, I want to turn this on to you real quick. You know, Crestron has done some research in this space as of late. You guys uh, in the past six months released a, a survey results, did an uh, ebook around this as well, where you were looking at some of those challenges of the diversity and the dynamics of the space. And yep. You had an interesting thing. You chose not to call it hybrid work. Why don't you tell me about what you call it and some of that research? Well, part of the, the reason that we are – uh, you know, hybrid work is certainly a, a good con a, a good talking point, but really we're moving into the, the future here in, in terms of uh, the way we all work is the definition of modern work. And, and that's how all many organizations are choosing to work. And so it's no longer about hybrid and we have to deal with all this return to work stuff. No, it really is. This is what modern work looks like. And when we say that too, we uh, we are looking beyond just enterprises as well. It includes education. It includes government institutions, right? Really any organization that needs to, or that has employees that needs to collaborate is, you know, they're looking for how do you get that done um, today, right? Right. You know, there's an element where I don't even like calling it hybrid work myself, although it's what people identify. Yeah. I've been starting to lean into the idea of calling it distributed work. I mean, mm -hmm. there's always yeah. this idea that there's somebody remote in a, in a meeting. Yeah. You, you guys have a really great stat around that in, in your research, right? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, as we uh, are on a quest to build great products that help enable work, um, you know, we, we asked everybody, you know, what are the challenges you're facing and what does it look like? And, you know, one of the, the stats that came back to us that was surprising in one way um, is that 80% of meetings include a virtual participant. Um, wow. But, and, and, and that's a very high number. And so that's, you know, one thing that like on the surface, okay, now I get it. Yeah, that's totally intuitive that even though I think the important point is even if this meeting right now doesn't have a virtual participant, the chances mm -hmm. that the next meeting does is very high. And so sure. what that is clearly doing is putting pressure on organizations to enable really quick, simple, and easy um, connection of a virtual participant into any type of meeting. But there's challenges. There's audio quality, there's mm -hmm. video quality, there's difficulty in seeing content. You know, even in office, I think you guys have highlighted some other challenges about yep. sharing content might be difficult or, or too many in-room uh, participants become, dis there's distractions and what have you, right? Yeah. It's so a lot of things going on making this challenging. Yeah, I think that, you know, obviously some of that, it, those insights aren't necessarily novel. I think this is something we've seen in, in many different surveys. Audio quality is very important. Video quality is super important. Um, but keeping people engaged, you know, in the conversation by showing the, the right participants in a room is so yeah. critical, right? Because I've been in plenty of meetings with uh, outside people where, you know, I've just got this bowling alley view and as a remote connected attendee right. and like i'm so done with this meeting i've moved exactly. on to email or something because you're not connected with the people that are a part of the discussion and you i know, think you, that's really critical you reminded me of something like that and i, I i'm gonna throw this in here it's a point that uh, it's worth making those bowling alley meetings are really unique um because typically the most important person in the room is the one sitting at the head of the table <laughs> that's the so furthest right. away yeah. and so your, your challenge with video options to get make sure you can see yeah. that person i mean it's the ceo it's the chairman it's the person you're presenting to and yep. most modern setups in these in these rooms especially these yep. large rooms 
wind up having a challenging. Well, yeah. I mean, that's it's very similar what you're talking about to what we're seeing. I think the remote participating uh, participant factor is a key element too. Uh, the other thing that's taking place too is I think what meetings are have evolved rapidly in the last three to four years that you can almost categorize them as different types of meeting. There is discussion meetings. There is debate meetings. There's meetings where presentation is taking place, where you might have one talk in the mini, where you might have two people making a decision back and forth, where you want to see a key presenter. I mean, the types of meetings, it isn't just static anymore of Brad's online presenting to me and we're all going to listen. Uh, it, it varies from, from face to face. Well, I think it, it's a reflection of that's how work gets done, right? I know. <laughs> right. Whether you're in person or you've got these virtual participants, there are many different kinds of conversations that you have to um, enable and you need rooms, uh, spaces that can right. accommodate those different kinds of things. Um, and you also need to make it approachable so that different kinds of meeting leaders and participants can leverage that technology and use it. Um, in order to enable their discussion or their meeting. You're right. You know, the other thing, and you, you were hitting, hinting at this, is the spaces in themselves have changed, mm -hmm. right? Yep. One space is going to serve multiple types of meetings. And, yep. and, you know, one place that you and I agree, we've seen this a lot, is in those larger spaces. You know, yep. maybe auditoriums, maybe uh, big, large conference rooms, but you also have those flex spaces as well. Mm -hmm. These spaces actually... Um, I have a lot of unique meeting types that are that it take place in there. Um, right. And you guys are an expert in that. I mean, you guys uh, know large spaces and how to best outfit large spaces. Tell me about a little bit about what you look at when you're considering a, a, a large space. I mean, you, what role is the technology playing in connecting the remote participant and those people in the room in your mind? Well, I think that um, the the role of technology is to remove some of those barriers uh, for the remote participant to be able to feel like they're a part of that conversation. Um, and I think that in these high impact spaces, what you find is they're often very unique um, and have different kinds of demands. And it might be the shape of the room. It might be the architecture of the room. It might be the size of the the room. And so all of yeah. those things are considerations when you're coming in and you're looking for that, you know, so you've got those physical considerations of the, the space in, the, in those rooms. And then of course the meeting types, like we were, we were talking about. And so, uh, you know, there are many ways that you can try and accomplish this. Um, but you know, whether, you know, you've got the physics requirements of where do you place a camera? Um, yeah. Where do you place the audio so that you can hear, capture that audio and, and have that interaction? Um, and all of those are really important decisions that help you break down what is the best approach for a particular space and, and enabling that. And today, there are so many op ways that you can solve some of these problems. And, and sure. it's great to have a diversity of product. Um, you know, it's a good, it's, I think we're all fortunate that, you know, there isn't just one form factor that you can use to enable these meetings. But I think all of these things come into play that will help you choose the right technology for that. Well, well, let's lean into one and let's talk yeah. again about the topic we want to talk about, which is multi-camera solutions right now. Mm -hmm. So yep. you have a well-established solution in space, the Automate VX solution. And, and yep. we'll dive into that a little bit later. But it, but by virtue of that, that kind of makes you and your colleagues, your product managers, your system engineers, experts in these multi-camera use cases taking place. So, I mean, what are some of those benefits that you guys – talk to customers about, about having more than one camera in the room, capturing this yeah. in these snowflake of rooms that you talked about. Well, I think the, these snowflake rooms, especially, <laughs> and then those, those really big ones too, where you have a lot of distance to cover. I think that with a multi-camera solution, some of the benefits that you get is, you know, you need different angles uh, to be able to capture the speaker or the presenter or the group that's um, in that room very, you know, it, to get them really clearly. And so having those cameras around the room, whether it's two cameras or four or, you know, all the way up to 12 cameras to capture each of those different uh, different angles is really important because at the end of the day, you do have to deal with the physics of right. what, can a ca what can a camera see and, and actually capture. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of value in having that, uh, the optionality to choose a different angle so that you get the best view of a, an individual presenter. Brad, I agree with you. And 
from an analyst point of view, um, one of the key things I'm really appreciating is that people like Microsoft, Zoom, and some of these UC uh, uh, ecosystem partners that you play very well with in terms of your solutions in integrating with theirs are actually really promoting this idea of multi-camera solutions. Um, now, if I look at that, I see two types of solutions in market right now. One of them we refer to as center of room, and the other one we refer to is outside in. I'll, I'll tell yeah. you what. I'll describe the center of room for our audience, and then I'll let you describe the outside in, and we'll kind right. of match up these cases as yeah. well, too. So center of room is the idea that you have a second camera that pairs with the front of room camera, but it's located probably on the table in itself, hence the center of room. It might have multi-camera uh, heads on it, or it might be a 360 camera, but it works to complement that front of room camera. And it does some really good things in certain use cases. When you have a very long room, uh, it does bring that camera down closer to those participants further down the table. It also creates interesting mic pickup points as well, too, so you can have additional pickup. And if the person is talking across the table, it may create the opportunity to get a good, interesting angle as well there. But what's use case-wise, what these align with is what I refer to as one-touch rooms or one-touch use cases. So a core idea is the idea that they're rooms that serve – um, a mass appeal. They serve generic use cases where people don't uh, need a lot out of that room around the meeting experience. They just want to be able to log on in a one-touch experience. And these cameras add extra value when there's things like length of a table or people further away from a microphone helping that use case. Why don't you go ahead and share with us about uh, center, I'm sorry, outside in. Cameras. Outside in, yeah. So yeah. from out, outside in, you can go a little bit further, particularly in those um, high impact spaces where maybe you have a very uniquely shaped table, um, you know, one that's not well suited for the algorithms of a, a center of table camera. You can place the cameras around the room. Um, I think the other uh, scenario scenarios where outside in is also very valuable are those situations where maybe you have a, a whiteboard or you have another area within the room that you also want to have camera coverage is that's very important, right? And then also, you know, there are just physics involved with capturing the right angle of people around a room. And, um, you know, when you have an outside in, you have the ability to place the camera in a, in a, in a spot that will give you the very best angle and have a little bit more control over that. So there's, uh, you know, it's good to have choice as yeah. an organization is looking for all of the ways to uh, deploy this kind of technology and outside in bring some of those added benefits for those unique kinds of spaces and meeting requirements. I, I love that term high impact. Let me lean into that for a little bit moment. You presented some really great use cases. Um, the idea that there's a key presenter and you wanna yeah. be able to set up a pr presentation zone, for example, and you wanna be able to follow that presenter. This could be a lecture type experience. This could be a town hall experience, right? That's one of them, right? Um, I think the other one I, that's a really key use case is when you have a key participant Maybe it's the CEO or the chairman or something like that. And you really want to pin in one view because that's the person making the decision in the room is, yep. is probably one of those uh, other great use cases as well, too. And then, like you said, there's probably great zones around content being presented, right? This is a hot zone. Let's set this zone up so that whenever someone comes in, it, it aligns well. It really brings to life that term high impact uh, rooms. But here's the twist. What happens if we reflect on my earlier statement about rooms serve different types of meetings, mm -hmm. what happens if a room serves both one touch use cases as well as high impact use cases? This is gets really interesting here um, because I think this is where, let's set up an example. Flex rooms are super popular now. Now a flex room in our definition is a mm -hmm. space that might change its configuration from meeting to meeting. It might be set up as table rounds, one meeting, a lecture, the next meeting. It might be a presentation or even a conference room, the next meeting. So you might have something that might be, I just want to one touch, get into the meeting and, and, and have a good camera coverage. Or you might have one of these high impact situations where I have a person presenting. It's an interesting challenge, wouldn't you say? It, it is. And actually, that's, uh, those are precisely the challenges we hear a lot of from our customers about, right? They turn to us to help us solve these uh, kinds of solutions. And so you do need a system that is very easy and flexible to be able to do that, whether it's a, uh, I would just want to start the meeting with one touch, you know, join this meeting and then let it do its thing automatically. Um, yeah. Or if it is like, say, a town hall scenario and you have someone there making sure the meeting is running as you want while there is that key presenter 
going. Um, but what we're hearing from a lot of customers is they've looked at a way to solve all their small rooms and their medium rooms. And they've, they've got that figured out at scale, but it's yeah. these high impact spaces that really pose some uh, unique and interesting challenges. And, and it's really critical because these are often the decision makers. It could be the case too. Some of these are sales demo rooms. And so these rooms are used to close really big deals. And, you know, it's very important for, from a revenue drive driving uh, situation. And so presenting themselves in the very best light is really important with some of these unique challenges. And so they're spending more time on solving some of these things. So Brett, I like what you're saying. Let me reflect back what I'm hearing, which I think this is what you're saying. We are dealing with the idea that we have multi-camera solutions that might be ideal, that would be ideal for these high impact use cases. And the added benefit is they can also scale down to these one touch meeting use cases. There's a level of simplicity to them. There's a level of unification within Microsoft Teams and Zoom that they work as simply as any other multi-camera solution. But they also have the caveat of still being there for those high impact situations. Great example, sales presentations, mm -hmm. key participants, content being presented, somebody moving around the room in a hot zone. It sounds like there's a versatility built into these, these solutions that is, um, probably great assurance for a, an IT decision maker and IT practitioner as well. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, at the end of the day, if the participants aren't comfortable using the technology or if it's not working for them, then it doesn't matter whether it turns on or, or not. And so these systems, especially a multi-camera system that has all of these options has to be easy uh, to use. And so what we see frequently is that by default, it is a one touch meeting, you come in and you do it, its thing, right? You use audio to trigger the right camera, you use AI to frame people appropriately, right? Yeah. And it moves between the, the speakers, um, you get a conversation and crosstalk happening and, and group framing, all those things happening in a very good, natural, intelligent way. But then when you get to a scenario where you have a town hall or you have a key presenter, the ability for either the meeting leader or a support person to come in and actually control it and say, this is the layout that we're looking for. This is the mode that we want it to be in. That is very important to have that flexibility to serve all the various different use cases that might pop up in a particular space. I love that. It, it's the automated experience as well as broadcast camera quality as well, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's another added benefit we didn't really talk about, too, but these outside in cameras tend to also be mechanical pan tilt zoom cameras, mm -hmm. too, yeah. which means they have glass optical lenses, which allow for really high quality image to be captured in these in these use cases as well. Yep, that's right. Well, uh, high quality and in very large spaces, right? Across yeah, the that's right. Distance, right. Like a lecture hall. Um, or an oddly shaped room. We we have um, one customer I was touring in New York City. They have this beautiful round room. It's only for their board meetings, uh, but it's such a uniquely shaped room and they needed the distance that the lenses could provide um, and at various different angles to capture every individual presenter as well. That's funny. I've seen a similar room. It was the head, uh, uh, US headquarters of TED Talk. Similar thing. They had an auditorium mm -hmm. in their space, but they had these wonderful, like I think they had like six or seven cameras around that, but high quality to zoom in both for audience mm -hmm. reaction as well. I mean, yep. let's, let's do this. Uh, we are, we're at the point that I want to talk to you and understand about automate VX. I mean, we are alluding to some of the values, some of the use cases and some of the key benefits that can take place when you have this outside in camera. And in my mind, one of the market leading solutions right now is the Automate VX solution right now. Yep. Why don't you tell our listeners, our viewers about it, introduce them to it in case they're not familiar with it. Sure. So uh, in our solution, actually, there's two core components. You have the cameras um, and then the, automa the Automate VX uh, switching system. So the cameras, and we just introduced a line of new cameras, the one beyond I-12 and the I-20 you know, there are rooms and scenarios where you want to use two of those uh, and intelligently switch between uh, the viewing angles for a particular meeting. Really great for those one-touch meeting experiences. As you move into those more complex, um, high-impact spaces, Automate VX gives you the ability to attach up to 12 different cameras. Wow. Um, wow. And you get that experience of the automated switching 
um, you know, using audio input and video uh, AI to be able to frame people appropriately, find the right speaker, the presenter, the, yeah. you know, the, the different areas. Um, and so Automate VX brings that for you, but it also provides for you the ability to do different layouts, um, to do those different types of, of meetings and easily switch between those layouts, whether you, you're using my, uh, Teams or Zoom or any other actually uh, type of conferencing system to go and, and broadcast that out there. So uh, Automate VX is a really easy, simple solution to do that. We have many customers across education and enterprise, and we've seen so much demand uh, and interest in this uh, since we introduced it, you know, 18 months or so ago. So, so wait, I, I want to lean into two things here. First of all, yeah. let's talk about what you talked about layouts. I love this because we alluded to yeah. this. Give yep. me a couple of examples of what you mean by layouts and how Automate VX can help optimize to a room. Yeah. So uh, with Automate VX, you have the ability to say, hey, you know, when we're in a meeting of this type, I want to see three cameras at once. Um, always show this one angle for me, right? Maybe that's a key person in the in the meeting. Um, okay. And then in the other one or two spaces, follow the active presenter um, oh. or the active speaker. So then you have the ability to design um, what that output looks like. Um, and so that, again, helps. It, it goes really well with these kind of unique needs of a, a particular space. And so you can design these as you deploy the room. And then the the person running the meeting can select those different layouts, either as the meeting starts or throughout the meeting, uh, to provide the very best kind of experience for the remote participants. I love it. And this is on top of those basic use cases, such as active speaker or group yep. framing. So the yep. active speaker idea, if myself and someone that you and I know, like Sam Kennedy, who's very vocal, we're, we're across the table talking to each other and the camera's switching back and forth. I mean, that is the active speaker capability built in, which can totally. help in this, those, what we call one touch use cases, right? Yep. Or yep. perhaps an intelligent group framing of, of the room. I mean, there may only be three people in the room and 10 chairs, but it would probably zoom in just yeah. on those three participants, right? Right. Yep. That's right. And so that flexibility, the automated flexibility just takes all the pressure off of the people in the meeting to worry yeah. about the technology. It just works for them and, and adds that context, right? I love that. That's key because then you're meeting, then you're collaborating, then you're communicating. You're not fumbling for a remote. Can you see yep. me? Can you hear me? That's good stuff. Yep. And then you drop something also, which uh, makes me think about the, the analogy people talk about good, better. And I want to talk about what I think is best about use cases here. So I did see those the new eye cameras. Uh, you yep. introduced them and brought them in person at ISC in Europe uh, just a, a month or two ago. Um, beautiful cameras. and But these can be set up in a primary, secondary relationship. So one camera works as the primary front of room camera, and the second one can be located where that person chooses without any additional hardware in between them. Is that right? That's exactly right. So it's very simple to deploy. Um, it's really kind of self-contained between... Uh, the two cameras, but it enables those use cases. You know, we we you know we try to talk about this delicately, but those scenarios where somebody's in a meeting and they stand up and they stand right in front of the camera <laughs> that's at the front of the room. Uh, you know, it's not a very flattering angle, uh, but the secondary camera provides the a better view. Um, and right. so again, it's it's um, you know putting everybody in the best light. So that one's really important. And then the secondary one too, maybe it's a content place, maybe it's a whiteboard, right, or okay. a different part of the room and, and have that automatic switching. And so that takes that technology and scales it down to some of those yeah. medium impact rooms, right? right? Exactly. And then we were uh, visiting, talking about Automate VX in combination with this, which is those, mm -hmm. those uh, the good, better, best. But for me, there's an interesting one that you don't talk about, or I would love for you to talk about, which is the sightline solution. Now, yeah. this isn't just a camera solution, but this is more of a room experience solution where you are helping with how people see content, how they see foreign participants, and how they're being viewed and heard as well, too. Uh, there's a lot of great technology, but it's seamless in there. Can, can you talk a little bit about Sightline? Yeah, so this is actually a concept that um, occurred to us as a team in our own meetings, right? When we were start, starting to explore the, the multi-camera technology, um, and we had a lot more virtual participants, one thing we noticed is you know, those that are, you know, find it very important to keep remote participants engaged in the meeting, then you're in conflict with looking at the TV to see the remote participants while you're having a conversation. 
but okay. also looking at the that people that might be in the room with you. How do you can maintain eye contact in that kind of a conversation without excluding in a way the remote participants? And so um, if you think about solving that problem, it's a, it's an interesting one because so many people spend a lot of time on the remote participant, but forget uh, neglect what's the in room kind of an experience. And so yeah. Sightline was how can we pull all of the technologies that we have available to us to create a room that becomes really seamless to have a conversation with in-room people without neglecting the virtual participants. And so by putting cameras around the room and displays yeah. around the room, you're always able to have that face-to-face, -face, you know, eye contact, eye contact conversation with an in-room person and see the remote people as well. And, you know, I've held several meetings in that room and it really does make such a difference. And it's a really interesting kind of idea and experience and, Really, ultimately, we hope it inspires people to come up with different ways that they can leverage the technology to solve yep. their own unique challenges. If anyone can solve it, it's crushed on because not only you guys are market leader in these UC solutions, but your room control solutions are also market leading and your AV over IP, right? Yep. The ability to move those video screens or move the content on that is just world class. So I love that. I love setting this up for our audience to understand there's this good, better, best when you have to think about the multi-camera solutions that are available from Crestron. Is that right? Yep, yep absolutely. Um, and we have a lot of content on our, our website, actually some of the fun and interesting ones. Um, Microsoft just published their boardroom archetype, uh, which includes, um, you know, you can see examples of how our technology is in there. And so we've added some additional content around that. We have a bunch of new content around Sightline a really engaging experience. And so you can see the cameras, but also the rest of the technology that is um, leveraged to make that room come to life. Thank you for bringing it up. You're right. Uh, let's let's do this. Let's go ahead and wrap this up for our, our viewers so they can understand. We talked through some key ideas here, right? We talked about it's not hybrid work. It's just the way we're working. I love your term, modern work. Um, we introduced the idea that the types of meetings have changed. It's not just about a static presentation anymore. It might be an interactive conversation. It might be a debate. It might be a key presenter that you want to pick up all the time. And how the rooms have also had to adjust to this changing dynamics of the meetings. And more importantly, we honed in on those, uh, those large spaces. Um, I love that. Um, we were able to help our viewers understand the multi-camera options that are available. Each of them serve their, their best use case. Some of them we called one-touch use cases. Some of them we called high impact use cases. But I think the key idea that I like that you brought down is that solutions like the Automate VX or the iCamera solutions as well can not only serve those high impact meeting scenarios, but can also address those one touch use cases as well mm -hmm. too. It's a very versatile solution that Crestron has, has brought to market in this space as well. Yep. Well, and, and we tried to do that with one platform and one type of an approach. So as, a, yeah. as an organization is trying to solve such a variety of challenges, you know, they have a partner that they can work with to go and address those rather than trying to cobble a bunch of different things together to do it. I have to tell you, this this was a very informative cup of coffee. I appreciate it. This this was a well, good you. collaboration <laughs> session. Hey, let's let's leave our audience with a couple of uh, things that they can do. Uh, first of all, uh, more information available to you uh, in cooperation with Crestron. The Futurum Group has wrote a research brief on this topic. Um, you will find it available with links at the uh, bottom area below this webcast that you can download this. All the information we talked about, including some examples you can find in that document. It's a great way to start your education process about multi-camera solutions, in particular for high impact rooms. The other thing, Brad, you and I get to see each other here uh, in a couple of weeks in Orlando yep. at the Modern Work Summit. Yep, that's right. This is uh, an event that we are hosting uh, to en en enable more conversations about how we solve these problems, right? Whether they be cultural, whether they be technological, whether they might be just a, a design uh, kind of an approach. Uh, we're pulling together workplace, modern workplace specialists from many different uh, verticals um, in Orlando. So hopefully uh, some of you can all come join us as well. Craig will be there. Microsoft will be there. Uh, many other really great and informative conversations will be happening there. I, I will be there with bells on. I'm, I'm coming from Austin, Texas. I'll tell you what, Brad, anyone that comes up and says hello to me and says they saw this webcast, I'll bring some very special Austin barbecue sauce for them because we got the best barbecue perfect. here. So I'm going <laughs> to 
I'm going to have these people bring some, you know, come say hi to us about that. Well, this is great. Um, I appreciate you uh, visiting with me this morning. Uh, like I said, this was a great cup of coffee and a great chance to catch up. Um, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this cast. Brad, thank you for your time. This has been a fantastic education session. Thank you so much, Craig. And everyone, this is Craig Durr with the Futurum Group. Hey, tune in again. Next time, we'll bring you some more exciting information over a cup of coffee. Take care.